was peppering me about doing two minutes. I was like, I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. And I said, why don't you just, you know, ask people what I, you know, what they want to know. So I was, we had a meeting on Monday. I was surprised you guys responded because I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> um, but you know, we had five people send responses back to Brian. And honestly, they're really good questions. Um, you know, one was lessons and advice learned from the last downturn. Second was what's going on with First Republic? Is there an opportunity to help borrowers who have current loans there? Um, number three, the best advice for getting through um, this market these times, what do you wish you knew in retrospect during prior market cycles? So what are those? Um, recovery timeline after most recent recessions. The last one is how to endure a recession. Um, the uh, almost, I think there's almost the same answer for almost all of it. Um, to be quite honest, but let's go to the next slide. So the next like three, you know, slides tracks like, and we'll, we'll distribute this to everybody. Is is lists out like all the recessions since um, the Great Depression in 1929, and you know, what you're going to see is is that I can see it there. Is that um, is the timelines on? I mean, the Great Depression. It was the longest. It was three years and seven months, but it was followed up by another one you know, four years later. Um, and so what we sent laid out was kind of an explanation of it, plus uh, kind of peaked unemployment. And the GDP decline. So, the Great Depression, which is the worst, you know, yeah, three years, almost four years long. Unemployment peaked 1933, 24.9%, and you had a decline in GDP, 26.7. Uh, rest of the group, this guy's going to just read uh, later on. Let's go to the next one. You know, and this page kind of takes up to when I started working. But you know, you had another from 1958, another seven recessions. Um, but look at the durations, six months, 10 months, 11 months, 73 to 75, which is a lot of oil related, was one year, six months, from 1981 to 1982, again, one year, four months. They're short. Um, and Look at the peak unemployment. One thing I didn't know, we didn't have a 10 year talk about what you don't know, you don't know, you don't know. I didn't know we didn't have a 10 year T bill until 1963. <laughs> um, and started out at 4%. But you know, look at you know, 1980 recession, you know, treasury rates went to 11.43%. The 81, 82 recession went almost to 14 percent. Go to the next slide. These are my recessions. I started working in 1984. Uh, the 1990s recession was, it had gone almost eight years without recession. And again, it only lasted eight months. Chen tenure was at eight and a half percent. And GDP declined only 1.4 percent. Um, 2000, I did workouts um, in 1990. Um, I got caught up. That had a lot to do with the RTC. Um, the early 20s, 2000s, I was the tech bubble burst. Again, eight months. It's been 10 years since we had a recession. Peak unemployment went to 6.3, tenure was at 6. We had hardly very little GDP decline. Uh, and then I think what you guys think of the last recession, the great recession, um, that was one year, six months. But 
the guys all act like you have never been through a recession. You were. COVID. You know, we actually had a two-month recession with COVID. Um, craziness is unemployment, you know, was went to 14.7%. And 24 million people got laid off in three weeks in April 2020. Uh, and you know, because of the sh really shortness of it, you know, we had only negative 0.2. And so where are we at? You know, I think we talked about in prior cycles rolling recessions. I think very few people will say real estate, commercial real estate is not in a recession. While they're saying maybe fourth quarter, more likely first quarter 24, we'll have a technical recession. And you know we have three and a half percent unemployment right now. And the ten years at three point six percent. I mean it's the lowest other than you know during COVID when the ten years point eight nine. Um, so point I want to make is the angst and what goes on up until they declare the recession is the disruptive part. Okay. The recession itself, sure, they don't last, you know, they don't last long. They're really over before you know it, but in all these, you know, four that I went through already and going into my fifth, the, the disruption has, is all about the anticipation. And, and that's really what, you know, we're seeing now. We hear it from our lenders. We hear it from our customers. I think people, you know, who work for Toro, you know, are affecting deals that are not getting done. And so, you know, really don't fret the recession. You know, what we need to do is you just have to persevere because since the Great Depression, you know, these 20 something recessions, you know, we're still going, yet the anticipation into every recession is that the sky is falling. And, and I think our human nature is to get caught up in it. Um, and so, you know, all I know is they tend to be short. We worry way too much about them in the, in the front end. It has you know, real implications for people. Um, I think the implications right now is, you know, compared to the Great Recession, somebody pointed this out to me, you know, the Great Recession was you know, most jobs lost were at the senior levels. You know, right now, I think most jobs lost in our industry are at the junior levels. You know, people who have you know, staying power surviving Versus in 2008, you know, a lot of organizations kind of use it to kind of clean house and, you know, and get rid of, you know, expensive, expensive talent. Right now, we're, in, we're not doing that. So, so we talk about recovery lines, how do you endure a recession? You know, just no enduring it, it just happens, right? It's, and, you know, I think the best thing to do is constantly look for opportunity. You know, there's as much opportunity going down as there's opportunity going up. And I think we're starting, we're seeing it on the FS side. Um, Frankie and, uh, and I, one of the deals we talked to, talked about and um, identified which is both an AFS opportunity and, and one for capital advisors. It's a true workout. I mean, we're really starting to see these workouts and bring a lot of value. Just like I said, it takes three people to do a workout compared to make a loan. You know, it takes you know, those who can create value for our clients. You know, you guys can you know make make money. Um, lesson advice learned from the last downturn, 
is again, you know, keep your eyes open. You know, continue. To, you know, don't get don't get down by it. And it's really a hard thing to say, um, but just keep moving forward. Keep asking questions. You know, think of how big of a scope the company you know, Toro has, and that you know to the extent that we can provide services for people, you know, you know be an opening for.